Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent. Yeah, not Gwent that specifically because today I want to do a sort of analysis video on the price of power expansion and more specifically this thing, the expansion pass and what you're getting, whether it's worth your money and what, uh, yeah, just in general, uh, a bit of an analysis on the uh, price points of what Gwent is using to, um, well, sell this kind of stuff. So my aim with this video is to be as objective as possible, but I'm gonna also cap this off with a few of my own um, just opinions, uh, just to give you a better view on some of the more subjective areas of purchasing a pass like this one. To start this video off, I've moved ourselves to uh, Shoop's shop to uh, take a bit of a closer look to what you will be buying. So what are you getting specifically? Well, this expansion, the price of power expansion is split up into three phases. The first of which will be released in a couple of days and is called Once Upon a Pyre. That expansion will be getting 26 new cards and you'll also be getting a few ornaments if you buy the expansion pass. Um, the next expansion phase will be in August and then the final phase will be in October. So by October you should have everything that is in the expansion pass. So that of course means that once you buy this expansion pass you will only be getting a third of its content by the release of the first phase on the 8th of June. And only in October you will have everything that you actually paid for. The first part of the expansion pass is the um, that we're going to talk about here specifically are the ornaments. So there are 21 themed ornaments and a bonus item, which is the animated pyre coin, which is unlocked immediately. There is a specific reason for this that we'll go into in a minute, but let's go over all the other ornaments first. The first big batch of ornaments are the avatars. 18 of the 21 ornaments are just quote-unquote, just avatars. Um, only six of those are known already. I've shown you them here on the screen. Um, the reason for that is that CDPR wanted to avoid spoilers because all of the avatars that we've seen so far actually depict the legendary card of each faction. So we have six factions, six legendary cards, for well, one for each faction, and we're also getting an avatar for each of those cards. The fact that two thirds of the ornaments are not yet known is a bit of a hard sell to my mind, uh, because of course it could be hard for you to pay up that amount of money for something that you don't know what it's gonna be. Um, but this theme is also something that continues sadly with the remaining three ornaments. So the game board you can see here in the background is already shown. So we have this uh, little town with a pyre on the left and a few houses on the right, which is a very nice game board, but the card back and the leader skin are not yet known. So we don't know what is gonna be on that card back. You're basically paying for nothing. Um, and then the leader skin, you also don't know what it's gonna be. And especially the leader skin is a bit of a problem um, because CDPR doesn't wanna divulge even whether this leader skin is gonna be faction specific or a neutral leader skin. Which means that if it's a faction specific leader skin, this could be a leader skin for a faction that you never play, which could of course impact the decision whether you will be buying this expansion pass or not. The last item in this, uh, in the ornament batch is of course the coins um, skin, the animated pyre coin, which you will be able to use immediately. You don't even need to wait until the 8th of June to use this. And the reason why they've most likely added this into the expansion pass is that on iOS and Mac, I don't know if it's a requirement on Android, but they need to provide you with an item that you can use immediately if you're spending real money. So that's why usually those packs include an item that you can use right away. Of course, the second part of the pass is the biggest um, part of it, which will be all the new cards that are going to be in this entire expansion, so all three phases and premium versions. 117 cards in total, of which 78 are unique. To clarify, this means that on the 8th of June, you will be getting 39 premium cards. In August, you will be getting another 39 premium cards. And then in October, you will get the final batch of 39 premium cards, giving you 117 premium cards in total. 78 ones of those, well, 78 of those cards will be unique, which means that, of course, those will be the unique cards. 
because half of the cards that are in this expansion will be bronzes and the other half will be gold. All the bronze cards you will be getting double in this expansion pass because of course you can use bronze cards twice in your deck which is the reason why you're getting those. And that's also the reason why the, um, the description here states that there are only 78 unique ones. So in total you'll be getting 21 if we assume that the neutral cards by the way because I don't know at the time of this video whether the neutral cards are going to be which rarity they're going to be but I'm assuming it's going to be a legendary and a rare card each time so assuming that you will be getting in total 21 legendaries, 18 epics, um, 42 rares and 36 common cards and of course the rares and commons half of those are duplicates. The fact that we're getting a specific well the specific cards instead of just a random bunch of kegs is probably the biggest difference with the previous expansion packs and of course the biggest step up as well because you don't need to rely on the luck of the draw to actually getting the cards that you want you will be guaranteed of getting every single card in the uh, expansion which of course with just kegs you would be well i think we all know that you would hardly get all the cards in the expansion especially the more rarer ones um, if you would just be getting kegs but of course the question of this video is whether the expansion pass is worth its hefty price tag because of course you can see here it's 65 euros but uh, let's break down the numbers in detail to get an objective view on this topic so the price of power expansion will cost you something between 50 euros, I think it's just under 50 euros if you buy it on GOG, uh, to 65 euros which is what you're seeing here because I'm working on the Mac version here. So the mobile versions and the Mac versions will um, cost 65 euros just because of the 30% markup that Apple and uh, Google take on mobile platforms which is of course why CDPR goes for a higher price point so they have the same uh, gain for every, the same amount of profit for every expansion pass they sell. Now let's move out of this section of the store and move to the ornament section because I want to compare the um, ornaments that you're getting in the expansion pass with what you already can buy on the store just to get a little bit of a view of what CDPR puts as a value on these skins. So as you can see, the Emperor skin is a leader skin and goes for eight euros. The Emperor skin is faction specific for Nilfgaard, but we also have a neutral skin here under Shoop, which is also eight euros. We're still on the Mac platform, so that means that the prices are relative, of course. It could be that on your platform, the skins are cheaper, but then the expansion pass is also cheaper, so we're comparing it to the same platform. So leader skins are eight euros, quite simple. We you can also see the same thing with the um, game boards. So game boards basically have the same price, also eight euros, but there's also a few bundles here, which gives us a bit of an idea of how bundles are usually priced. So all of these bundles have a game board and a leader skin, which are all priced at 11 euros. So let's take that as our price point for the leader skin and the game board. And then of course, what else do we have? We have the uh, card back. There's a single card back for sale here, which is three and a half euros. There's also one in the Great Oak Bundle here, which seems to be a bit pricier, just because of the fact that it's combined with a few cheaper items, but is still priced at nine euros. So I think that we can say that the card back, we can round that up to four euros, giving us 15 euros for the card back, leader skin and the game board. Um, avatars are a bit trickier to calculate. There are a few bundles with avatars, but they're usually priced pretty low, uh, especially with just being meteorite powder over here. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we can say that avatars cost about one euro per piece. So with 18 avatars, that's 18 euros, along with the 15 euros for the other ornaments, means that we're at 33 euros already. So that's, use that, 33 of the 65, as our base. So that leaves us with 32 euros for the remainder of the expansion pass. And that of course are the cards, which kind of seems proper with our calculation. So half of the cost of the expansion pass is for the ornaments, and then the other half is for the cards, which splits up rather evenly. Cards, however, are a bit trickier to calculate because um, there's no real comparison that we can make here, especially since the cards in the expansion pass are of varying rarities and there are hardly actually cards just for sale directly. Uh, the only things that you can actually get are cards that are in these packs, these faction specific packs. So for example, here you 
pay 8 euros for a single legendary card, but also a card back, a border and 5 kex. So it's really hard to define what the cost of that single card is. But there's also one resource that is heavily monetized in this game. And of course, since all the cards in the expansion pass are premium cards, we can start looking at the cost of what it would cost you personally if you want to craft these cards for yourself and then use that as a reference for what you're getting in the expansion pass. Because of course the resource that I'm talking about is uh, Meteorite Powder. So Meteorite Powder is the only resource of the tree that is directly monetized. Um, and Meteorite Powder, you can see the prices here on Mac. Just to make our calculations a little bit easier, uh, we're gonna say that Oh, in, in average, you, on average, you'll be getting 200 Meteorite Powder for every Euro you spend. Aside from Meteorite Powder, if you want to craft the cards, of course, you're also going to be needing card scraps. But since Gwent is very generous with card scraps, I'm going to ignore the card scraps for now. I'll be coming back to that in a minute, but card scraps can be omitted for now. So if we break down all the cards that we just talked about that are in the expansion pass, based on their rarity and then their crafting cost in meteorite powder you can see the calculation on the screen right now you will be ending up with just under 25,000 meteorite powder which is of course a lot if you want to buy meteorite powder with just the 32 euros from the expansion pass that we still had left after deducting the cost of the ornaments you would only be getting um, 8,000 meteorite powder you can see that over here that's the price point over there which is only well, even less than a third of the total cost so you're basically getting over three times the value if you buy the expansion pass aside from the fact of course that you can't decide which cards that you're getting it's all just the cards from the particular expansion even if you were to buy meteorite about it with the full 65 uh, euros from the pass you would only be getting at 18,500 because you would be buying this and this um, which is only about three quarters of the cost that you would actually need which is still a lot more efficient if you just buy the expansion pass again we're ignoring the amount of card scraps that you would need uh, on top of that so you're getting even more value than just uh, calculating the meteorite powder so in closing of this section of the video comparing the content of the expansion pass to the base prices of what gwent already sells purely objectively the price of power expansion pass gives you a lot of value for your money. But of course, there are a lot of surrounding factors that also influence your decision into whether you should be buying the expansion pass or not. So there's a few considerations that we're gonna be taking based on the nature of Gwen's economy and uh, the way this pass was advertised. So let's take a closer look at what those factors specifically are. The first thing that we can't forget when doing these sort of analysis is that the prices that we're using, the numbers that we're using are to calculate the value of this particular pass. The base numbers are also defined by CDPR, which could of course conflict with what your uh, sense of value for these kinds of ornaments are. So for example, me personally, I think that the leader skins and game boards are way overpriced compared to what you're getting. Eight euros is just too much, and there have been actually more expensive ones as well. Uh, so to me, that is not worth the cost. But then, of course, the cards might actually, um, well, tip the scales in the other balance. Um, but again, it's all based on your personal sense of worth for especially the cosmetics. But regardless, if you're even just looking at the cards, there's no cheaper way of getting them than the expansion pass, right? So if you want the cards premium, that is. If you're not, if you don't care about premium cards, then there's actually a way easier way to get those cards. So we touched on this a little bit in the previous section already, but your feeling of value for these cards can be somewhat diminished by the generosity of Gwent in general in regards to its card scrap economy. Even if you don't play daily, you'll likely experience that you'll get a decent trickle of card scraps while you play from, of course, reward points and duplicate cards. Um, even aside from that, everything in the game that you earn eventually turns into card scraps, aside from meteorite powder, of course. But uh, if you're getting kegs, then you're getting duplicate cards, and those cards turn into card scraps. If you're getting ore, you're turning those into kegs, which of course turn back into cards, and duplicate cards turn into card scraps. Even the ward points, as I just said, 
uh, mostly end up as card scraps. So you'll get a lot of card scraps more than you might think. But of course, card scraps are very super useful for new uh, players because they allow you to steadily create the cards that you want to be using in this game and just steadily increase your collection over time, um, which is super cool because even there's not a single card in this game that is locked off from this mechanics. You can uh, craft every card in this game with just card scraps. You're not getting the animated version, but you're getting the card to use. And in most matches, of course, that's going to be the thing that you're going for. Eventually, because of this process, uh, you'll have every single card in the game, as I have over here. And at that point, card scraps become useless. You'll constantly still earn card scraps, but there's nothing that you can spend on. Uh, spend them on and you'll end up with a huge pile of them as you can see over here. Of course, I realize I'm not the uh, baseline player in Gwent, but eventually a lot of players will face this um, problem. Especially when you're a player that is invested in this game. And that's of course the kind of player that the expansion pass is targeting. Those are the players that will be able, well, will be wanting to spend 65 euros on a single expansion pass. The only way that you can actually spend your card scraps after this point is on new expansion. So once a new expansion hit, the first thing that I do is craft every single card because I can then reduce my card scraps just a little bit. So even as, as you can see, uh, 25,000 card scraps wouldn't make that much of a dent into my uh, resource pool there. But that's the reason why I'm going to be using my card scraps, which in turn means that if I don't care about the premium versions of this card, that it diminishes the value of the expansion pass severely. Now, don't get me wrong, I enjoy this, I love the game for this system. It's a way that is allowing every single player to play this game without spending a single uh, euro, pound, dollar, whatever your currency is, um, and you'll eventually have all the cards, rather quickly even if you think about it. But that same generosity, sadly, um, can be denied that the same system causes you to have a less of a sense of value for each and every single card and in a consequence of course for that expansion pass. Now those are of course just some subjective reasons. If you don't care about that go ahead and buy that expansion pass. I'm just here to give you both sides of the coin. The biggest problem to my mind however are the hidden ornaments. So right now if you buy the expansion pass you have no idea what two thirds of the ornaments will be. So 12 of the avatars are still hidden. You don't know what the card back is going to be and you don't know what the leader skin is going to be. Again, the biggest problem to me is the leader skin. The leader skin could be tied to a single faction. We don't know. And if it's tied to a faction that you personally never play, then it's going to be a leader skin that is completely useless to you. You have it, but you'll never be able to show it off because you don't care about the faction that it's linked to. Um, it could actually even be more subjective if the art on the card pack is something that you really dislike or the character that you want you get as the leader skin is a character that you just don't like and you'll also never use those ornaments and that could be a deciding factor to you if you want to buy this expansion pass or not. So still a bit of a problem and as a comeback I get for because I've asked this question online a few times already as well and the comeback I receive when I ask these questions is that of course to compensate for this the expansion pass is available for longer it's not that when the first phase releases that you can't buy this expansion pass anymore and eventually you'll know what you're getting but that brings with it a few other problems uh the biggest one to me is that imagine that you're buying you're holding off on buying the expansion pass you're gonna say okay i'm gonna buy this expansion pass in october and then i'm gonna know what all of the other ornaments are gonna be and i can decide whether i want it or not by that point, imagine, you'll have played for four months with the previous two phases already released, which means that all of those cards are available in the Ultimate Gag card pool, which means that very, very likely you will have amassed a lot of the uh, cards that are already in those first two phases of the expansion. It would be weird if you didn't have any of those just yet, um, which means that in turn that devalues the overall cost of the expansion pass again it's it's a catch-22 either you start and buy this now not knowing whether you'll be able to use all the ornaments or you buy it at the end 
when you know what all the ornaments are going to be, you say, okay, I like all those ornaments, but you have about half of the cards that are in this expansion pass already in your game, so you're paying for something you already have. It's something that could have been alleviated by making ornaments that are not directly tied to the cards. Remember, the avatars were hidden because of the fear for spoilers for the cards that are tied to those avatars, and the leader skin and card back are probably similarly hidden, um, because the leader skin has most likely going to be a character on one of the cards in the later phases of the expansion, uh, which could of course be been done better if it was just a character from one of the first 26 cards that we saw. Um, but that is not the case. Right now, you will be either buying something that you don't know what you're going to get, or you're buying something that you partially already have. So it's not ideal either way. But in closing, all things considered, I'm still very positive on this expansion pass. I know it might have sounded a bit uh, badly before. Uh, it's a very good step in the right direction, especially since you're getting all the cards from the expansion in one go. No need to rely on luck from the, the card cacks. And even if you were really lucky, the chances that you were missing cards were still extremely high because of the amount of legendary cards in this expansion it would have been even worse. Um, so the only problem is still the yeah the, the bit of the the catch 22 and the hidden ornaments and then the cards that you might already have since it's spread out so much um so still some issues that might be resolved in future expansions but i'm really really positive um on the rest the way this expansion pass is actually set up because it's definitely just a, a step in the right direction and i feel like Gwent is steadily improving its monetization options uh, and of course i'm very looking forward to the new cards as well because that's uh, what expansions are usually about but that's it for today what do you think about the price of power expansion and specifically the expansion pass uh, itself i want to hear your opinion on this did you like it did you buy it already um is it something that you're hesitant to buy because of one of the reasons I just stated or another reason I'm really curious to find out about that as well and we can just discuss that in the comment section down below or on the social medias uh, I'm available on Twitter if you want to talk further there at at trophynet that's t-r-o-v-n-u-t um, and other than that yeah I'm really looking forward to your feedback on this video in particular as well because if you liked it don't forget to do like this video right here with the buttons down below on the, on the YouTube interface because uh, every support is really appreciated. Um, so thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next video on Gwent, which is most likely going to be some card reviews on the 26 new cards that we're going to get in, because um, I'm going to just give you my opinion on those cards, because uh, I'm, again, really looking forward to experimenting with those new cards. So thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next video on Gwent. Goodbye and stay nutty.